Here's a new way to explore a great estate. What looks like a video game is the work of Torn Johnson, a professional drone operator and videographer. So this is an FPV drone that I built myself. FPV stands for first person view, and that's kind of what allows me to get into really tight, unique spaces that you can't normally get with regular film. And it's all in one continuous shot. Johnson regularly flies his drone around Glen Magna Farms in Danvers. His social media videos help draw attention to this 11-acre country escape. Its colonial revival mansion and former tea house are hidden treasures, even for locals. What they usually say is, I grew up in Danvers, been here my whole life, and I never knew this place existed. And then I'm so happy because I'm like, now you found it, <laughs> and I hope you enjoy it. Matthew Martin is restoration manager for the Danvers Historical Society, which owns Glen Magna Farms. Now a weddings and events venue, this was a summer retreat for generations of the Peabody and Endicott families. Shipping merchant Joseph Peabody first moved here during the War of 1812. He fell in love with the property. He purchased it for $4,000. In the late 1880s, the garden was redone by Peabody's grandson-in-law, British statesman Joseph Chamberlain. His son Neville became England's prime minister in 1937. This garden here was designed by Joseph Chamberlain with uh, the Italian and English garden design in mind. The so wisteria was planted in 1889 around a cedar arbor. By the 1960s, Glen Magna had ballooned to 330 acres. To save the land from development, the Danvers Historical Society purchased 11 acres. The town of Danvers purchased the outside area to create a buffer to create Endicott Park. Today, Endicott Park has 165 recreational acres for the public, says Steve Bartha, Danvers town manager. Close to 200,000 people a year now visit the park, but it really is, it does sort of fly under the radar, and I think a lot of people like it that way. You want some? Erica Moretti is Endicott Park's program coordinator. We have a children's barn where we have animals. We have a visitor center, which was once the carriage house. We have a hay barn. We've got pastures, walking trails, picnic areas. I feel like you could spend all day here doing various things and keep busy. You can't put a price tag on a piece of property like this. It's invaluable. It's Article 97 land, which in mass general law means it is protected open space so it will be here for generations to come and enjoy. Ever imagine Boston's Beacon Hill during the horse and carriage era? You can step inside of this federal period townhouse and really see what it looked like. This 5,000 square foot brick row house on Mount Vernon Street is the Nichols House Museum. This is the parlor of the house. This is where Mr. and Mrs. Nichols would entertain. Every floor has the original furnishings and belongings of physician Arthur Nichols and his family, who moved here in 1885. Executive Director Linda Marshall. He and his wife, Elizabeth Homer Nichols, had three children. The Nichols sisters, they were very strong women. They were all social activists in their own right. They were very involved suffragists. The oldest daughter, Rose Standish Nichols, preserved the house as a museum, which opened in 1960. She was a career woman. She was one of the first professional landscape designers, a female, in the country. And she was very involved in other craft practices. She did wood carving, but she also was very much a social activist. Nichols' life was so interesting, she is now the subject of an opera. I Give You My Home, the Rose Standish Nichols story is a contemporary chamber opera piece for Boston's Guerrilla Opera. I love that she's a strong, straightforward woman. Artistic director Aliana De La Guardia says the one-woman performance will take place inside the Nichols house. I thought how wonderful to explore something on such a small scale, on such an intimate scale. I need to how does each one of these things resonate with us now and remind us of who this woman was. De La Guardia says, Guerrilla Opera's mission is to confront the status quo of the art form. Guerrilla Opera tends to see 
the world in a very progressive, a very, you know, a little bit punk rock light. Could even maybe be outside in this space too. Yeah. An immersive musical experience is also one way to introduce new visitors to old places. By coming into the home, it brings it to life again. Historic House Museum can feel somewhat static, right? So it's really exciting to work, particularly with performing artists who would bring all that energy back, back into the space. The Rose Standish Nichols Opera is in development and should premiere next year. Matthew Martin of Glen Magna Farms says he's growing native plants in the garden because they are more resistant to droughts and pests. One of those plants is bee balm, which colonial Americans used to make tea. Back in the day, the mansion at Glen Magna Farms was frequented by many illustrious guests, including former presidents Cleveland and Taft. In fact, the dining room retains the original wallpaper from that era. Next, some of us build fences in the Gilded Age, they build something much more elaborate.